Welcome back. The popular film American Sniper has smashed several box office records and was nominated for six Oscars. The film tells the story of Chris Kyle, the deadliest sniper in American military history. While many Americans have hailed the film as a tribute to a patriotic hero, critics charge that the film celebrates mass killings and fuels racism and violence against Arabs and Muslims. Should the widespread popularity of American Sniper be alarming to Arabs and Muslims? Joining me to share his thoughts is Dr. Shabir Ali. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So tell us a little bit about the book because as I understand you read the book and not the movie and I guess you didn't watch the movie, right? Yeah, that, just to be clear, the, the film is based on the autobiography of Chris Kyle, his book entitled American Sniper, and uh, it is, as you described, uh, a, a biography of the uh, most uh, successful uh, sniper in American history. He himself claims to have um, uh, uh, killed many, some 245, but uh, the documented uh, uh, kills or confirmed kills uh, are 160, uh, a large number, and uh, he uh, tells us about his background, how he got married, uh, his family life, and, and also his uh, um, military activity. So based on what I know about the movie, I know that it focuses a little bit, Kyle shows his personal struggle as a result of what he experiences, you know, because of being in war. Um, and it's, um, I guess, almost disturbing to me because it says that he's motivated by his failure to kill more women and children in order to save lives of American soldiers. So in your opinion, um, what, is the, what is the philosophy of killing that is portrayed? And is it specifically targeted at Arabs and Muslims? Because that's a conversation that we're seeing. In the book, uh, uh, Chris Kyle depicts himself as uh, um, somebody who actually likes to be in war situations and, and to be killing the enemy. Uh, in fact, uh, killing started for him uh, on the ranch when he was shooting raccoons uh, at a very early age. Uh, but uh, aside from this, uh, with his military training, he, he was always itching to go out there and, and shoot someone. Uh, and this is how he describes it. It's not simply that he wants to go there and defend his country, that too, but, but it's also uh, that he, he has this instinct that he wants to uh, bring into, into reality. Uh, and this is depicted also in some uh, non-combative uh, 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 situations. For example, once when he was at home uh, and uh, he uh, felt that there was a burglar in the house, uh, he uh, quickly grabbed his gun, uh, deciding to go after the burglar. And uh, in the meantime, he was thinking, no burglar is going to get into my house and live to tell about it. So, you know, that, that's how he, he sees himself. Uh, uh, he, um, on occasion, describes uh, his uh, time at home away from war, and he um, refers to maybe some things that are common to uh, many vets who come back from the war and they still uh, feel this kind of heightened, aggressive uh, 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 feeling within themselves. Uh, so he would have road rage, for example, if somebody cuts him off, uh, he would try to run that person off the road. This is after he came back from the war, or this is just the... In between, he in between. would come back and then, and then return. Uh, during the war itself, uh, as he were, uh, would look at uh, possible um, targets within the crosshairs, uh, w within his uh, lens, uh, he, he, he would actually often be waiting for permission to shoot. And, and if he doesn't get permission to shoot from his authorities, uh, he would describe them by, you know, he, he uses a lot of foul language in the book throughout, uh, um, and, and he would uh, describe them in, in mean terms, uh, um, referring to, a, you know, a female uh, a per personal part, um, using the slang and vulgar, um, uh, vulgar obscene type of uh, description. So he, he always wanted to be ready to, to, to shoot, and the interesting thing about uh, his targets in his view is that uh, he always describes them as savages, as scum, and he says in one place in his book the, uh, the interesting uh, point that uh, it, it is often said that if you want to kill another human, you have to dehumanize them first. And, and he said that these Iraqis were making it easy to do that. Easy to dehumanize them and th therefore easy to kill them. And uh, whereas uh, uh, many soldiers in, in war would regret having to kill people, 
they would say, okay, it just simply so happens that we, you know, we were there, we had to kill in order to survive. It's either we kill them or they killed us. Uh, and this can especially be seen when somebody is lunging at you uh, or pointing a gun at you or getting ready to kill you and you know it's, a, it's a, either they kill you or you kill them and then you kill in self-defense. You still regret it that you had to kill another yeah. human being, but at least it's excusable on the um, principle that you acted in self-defense. Here, wh when somebody is a sniper, he is in hiding, he, he is uh, in, in proper camouflage, he's not seen, and that's the whole business behind sniping. Uh, you pick a hideout where you cannot be seen, you fire off a shot, and as he describes it, uh, because it is at long range, the bullet reaches before the sound, so uh, people get shot before they even knew, know what has hit them, uh, and, and they die from that shot. Uh, so he's far away, uh, protected. He personally is not uh, facing any danger. He's only working with intel. Somebody tells him, this is the bad guy, take him out. Uh, and, and he does. Uh, but he himself describes in his book the fact that uh, military intelligence is an oxymoron, uh, you, meaning that you cannot be sure about the intelligence that's being fed to you in a military situation. So the, uh, at the end of it, we expect that he should have some remorse. But he says at the end of, of his book that he has no remorse. The 160 he has killed, n all, each one of them deserved to die. They Including were all- Including women and children, evil, right? Uh, well, uh, in one case, he shot a woman. Uh, and he's saying that that's the only woman he has ever shot. Um, uh, but he has no regrets about any of these situations. He sees them all as evil. And um, uh, he says himself that he sees everything as black and white. He so how does this um, how does this tie in in contrast to what the Quran says about war and killing? Because the fact, like just explaining what you're saying, I knew about you know that this was the idea that was promoted that him having no remorse. But even just hearing about you know what you're talking about about you know even his desire to kill the burglar, like how does this how do we understand um, you know killings and war in from an Islamic context? Well, in the Quran, it's very clear that uh, war is not a desirable thing. Uh, the Quran says every time the enemy uh, tries to start the fire of war, God puts it out. Uh, and the Quran says, a sulhu khair, reconciliation is better. Uh, so the purpose of war is not to kill the other side, uh, as Chris Kyle puts it. He says that the purpose of war is to make the other uh, people die. And he, again, he uses foul language to refer to them. Um, uh, but but uh, it, from the Quranic perspective, the purpose of war is to bring back peace. Uh, sometimes the aggressor needs to be dealt with in order to uh, alleviate uh, and remove his aggression and to bring back a peaceful situation with justice for, for everybody. And it's not to kill uh, the, the soldiers of the other side, it's to capture them if you can. And then eventually after, as the Quran says, when the war lays down its burdens, then you can release these captives either for free or uh, as for a ransom in exchange uh, sometimes for uh, your, your prisoners that are held by, by your people who are held prisoners uh, by them. Uh, killing is, is never the objective. That's just som uh, sometimes a last resort that is unavoidable. And, and yeah, to kill another human being is regrettable even in, in war. Uh, the, the Quran in the fifth chapter in the 32nd verse says that if you kill another human being, that's like you're killing a whole uh, people because if you think of all the potential progeny from this uh, person. At the same time, if you save another human being, uh, that is like saving a whole people, again, with the potential uh, of this uh, human being to have uh, progeny. Uh, so, th as much as a life can be saved and killing can be avoided, this is the Quranic uh, objective. And I believe that this is uh, also a, a Christian objective, although Chris Carl describes himself as a strong Christian, and uh, he had a cross tattooed in red color onto his forearm. Red, he said, to signify blood. Um, and, and it's a crusader cross. So even though uh, uh, the uh, president at the time, George W. Bush, had said uh, that his, he mistakenly used the word crusade to describe uh, their, their endeavors uh, in, in retaliating for the um, bombing of the World Trade uh, Center towers, uh, ne nevertheless, this uh, author, Chris Kyle, uh, takes the Crusader idea very seriously, and apparently some of his con comrades as well, because uh, one of his um, uh, platoon members who had lost an eye uh, had it replaced with a prosthetic eye, but he also had engraved or, or imprinted in that uh, uh, prosthetic eye 
uh, the, the symbol of, of the Crusader cross as well. And it seems that his, uh, Chris Kyle's wife has also taken this uh, seriously because she gave him a new wedding ring eventually uh, made of steel and engraved on that wedding ring is the same Crusader cross. Wow. Um, I just, um, I guess I'm, I'm a little speechless just because of, you know, all of the content that you're describing. But I'm just wondering, you know, the movie has been nominated for six Oscars. And, you know, it's, it's obvious the mere fact that he's describing anybody as, as savages is, is, you know, there are no words for that. So, um, and there has been a lot of, uh, you know, s uh, people responding on social media with a lot of uh, vulgar language that I can't even begin to describe at this moment. But um, I guess what larger implications do you see this having on the average Muslim community? Well, uh, I, I see that uh, th this book actually is um, uh, catering for that kind of readership, the people who will use that kind of vulgar language. In fact, uh, reading the book, one of the painful things for me to read the book uh, was to go through all of that uh, vulgarity. And um, it, it, it obviously caters to an audience that, and a readership that would love to read that. Read that. But uh, his vulgarity also includes um, uh, material that is demeaning to women, material that is racist. And um, it, it, it is interesting to, to think about why some publishing houses would be publishing a book like this and why some, uh, a, a director like Clint Eastwood, otherwise successful, uh, and known in the early days to be the good cowboy who was shooting up the bad uh, people, the outlaws and so on, uh, why, why he would want to promote something like this by making a movie out of this uh, guy's uh, life. Uh, it, it is, isn't it enough that within the military situation he's decorated with his medals and given uh, his um, recognition for uh, his marksmanship uh, w within the battle situation? Do we need to promote him as a personality uh, because he may have been a very good marksman, but um, it, the, the personality that he portrays, I don't believe uh, should be properly representative of uh, any, any people, um, and, and much less uh, the, the American uh, people. And you, yeah, Muslims should be concerned about this because it, it will uh, provoke the kind of sentiments that he has in other people. Uh, other people will be looking at it and say, yeah, this is our hero, this is how he thinks about the Muslims. Um, and um, they might start thinking, yeah, we, we ought to think like that as well. So one of the ways that people are speaking out is, um, you know, in response to the drastic hate that's increasing in social media is using Twitter and Facebook to respond back. Um, so much so that the Ara American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee actually wrote letters to actor uh, Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood to ask them to speak out in an effort to help reduce the hateful rhetoric. So is that what we should also continue to do, Muslims and non-Muslims alike? Um, especially if this, you know, the, the mere fact that it's been nominated for six Oscars says a lot. Yeah, obviously we should use every legal means uh, and uh, beyond that to appeal to the good uh, sentiments of our fellow um, uh, citizens of the world uh, to think about the nature of this film and whether they want to be an active um, uh, part in promoting uh, this uh, film or whether something else can be done about this. But a lot of this is reactionary and is after the fact. Obviously the film is already out there, it's already being seen, the book is already out there and has been read and republished. Uh, so we, we need to think more in terms of proactive steps. Uh, we, we as Muslims need to proactively be giving the right message to uh, the Americans and to the rest of the world about who Muslims are, what Islam stands for. We need to take proactive steps to get the right information out uh, and not just simply react uh, to the movie that is out there. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome.